Alright, so this question is taken from June 2010. So I want you to pause the video and attempt this question. It says a farmer supplies his neighbors with X pumpkins and Y melons daily. Using the following conditions, where Y is greater than or equal to 3 and Y is less than or equal to X. And the third condition, the total number of pumpkins and melons must not exceed 12. Write an inequality to represent the third condition. Pause the video and attempt this question. Alright, so as you pause it, it says the total number of pumpkins and melons. So the first thing is, what represent pumpkins? X. X represent pumpkins. X is pumpkins and Y represent melons. Total is what? When you add them, sum. So ah. x plus y is what? Not exceed. Can't be bigger than. So x is less than or equal to 12. Ah. That's part one. x plus y is less than or equal to 12. Really nice. I hope everyone got that. <laughs> Alright, now the next part says using a scale of one centimeter to represent one pumpkin on the x and one centimeter to represent one melon on the y draw the three lines associated with the three inequalities they need to shade the common region and determine from your graph the minimum value of x and y which satisfy the conditions so let's go ahead and do this question but i want you to pause the video and attempt doing it first so go ahead take out your graph paper do the graph, shade the common region, write down the minimum values of x and y. So as you pause the video and attempt, now we're going to pull up our graph and do this question. Alright, so let's go ahead. We'll pull up our graph now and we're going to do this question. So I'll pull out my graph paper. Alright, so I pull out my graph paper now and I say I need one centimeter to represent one unit, no problem. Alright. Just to write down the scale. I love to write down the scale. I can see X is saying one centimeter represent one unit. And on the Y, one centimeter is gonna represent one ah. unit. That's what they tell us to use. All right, so let's go ahead and do this now. So first things first, y is greater than or equal to 3. y is greater than or equal to 3, that means what? That's a horizontal line. Ah. So the horizontal line y equal to 3 would be here. That's a horizontal line y equal to 3. But one the portion of the graph that's above it. This is the line y equal to 3. I want the portion of the graph that is above it. Ah. Alright. Now the next part now. Y is less than or equal to X. So we need to draw the line Y equal to X. Right. So ignore the inequality sign and focus on the line Y equal to X. So when X is 5, the Y value is 5. That would be this point here. When the X value is 10 y value is 10 i'm just extending the line there's there should be no point here so let me fix it now can't i extend the line all right it seems like i can't extend the line so i'm going to remove it when x is 5 the y value is 5 when x is 10 the y value should also be 10 when x is 15 y value should also be 15. I'm going to stop the graph right here. I don't think we're going to need to pass this right here. All right. And this is the line y equal to x. This is the line y equal to x. But where do we need? The portion of the graph we need is when y is less than or equal to x. So since we're less than, we're what? Below the line. Always remember less than mean below the line. So we are below this line. 
we are below this line. All right. Now that we're below that line, the last one that we need is they said that the sum must not exceed 12. So x plus y is less than 12. Anytime you're drawing x plus y equal to 12, what you're going to do is put a point on 12 on the x, put a point on 12 on the y. So 12 on the x and 12 on the y, and they're going to draw a line connecting the two. All right, so that is your line x plus y. This is your line x plus y equal to 12. Wow! But what do we want? We want below the line. We want the portion that is below this line. Below. Below this line. So if we're to identify by shading the common region, the common region is going to be where? In this triangle. This is oh. our common region. That's the common region. This is really nice. That's our common region. All right? Nice. After we get our common region, identify by shading the common region, we can tell them C graph, please. C or graph. Please, go ahead. C or graph. Now it says, determine from your graph the minimum values of X and Y which satisfy the conditions. So the conditions are satisfied where? The minimum values that satisfy the conditions are, here are the minimum values. This point right here, this point right here, this point right here. All right, oh. so notice that the minimum values that satisfy the condition are, my graph is not 100% as you can see, but this is when x is 6, x value of 6. When the x value is 6, the y value is 6. All right. So that's the point six six. Another minimum point right here is when x is nine, the y value is three. So that's nine three. And right here now, the next minimum point is when x is three one two three, the y value is three. Ah. So those are the minimum points that satisfy the condition. So we can tell them the minimum points are three three. 9, 3, and 6, 6. All right? Now, look at these three that they indeed satisfy the inequality. Look at this. 3 is greater than or equal to 3, yes? 3 is less than or equal to 3. And 3 plus 3, which is 6, is less than 12. Notice that 3, 3 would satisfy all the inequalities. Check with 9, 3 as well. When, when x is 9... And y is 3. 3 is greater than or equal to 3. 3 is less than or equal to 9. And 3 plus 9 is 12. And 12 is less than or equal to 12. Notice if you check with all these points, inequalities are going to be true. Wow! So all we're saying is those are the minimum points that satisfy that common region. And that takes care of this question right here. Really nice. All right, this question right here, this is taken from the January 2012 paper. So I want you to go ahead, pause the video and attempt this question. All right, so this question is taken from the January 2012 paper. So I want you to go ahead, pause the video and attempt this question. It says the diagram below shows the graph of three lines and a shaded region defined by the three inequalities associated with these lines. The inequality associated with the line 3y equal to x is 3y greater than or equal to x. Part 1. State the other two inequalities defined by the shaded region. So pause the video and attempt the question. <laughs> All right, so notice the first thing they did was they talk about the line 3y. They talk about the line 3y equal to x, right? In other words, they're saying that when x is 3, the y value is going to be 1. So that would be this line right here. This is the line 3y equal to x, right? That is the line that I put on right there in pink. This is the line 3y 
equal to x. And they said that the inequality that corresponds to it is 3y greater than or equal to x because you're above the line. That's all we're saying. So we're above this line. This is the line 3y equal to x. So write down the other two inequalities. The other two inequalities is number one. What about this line? This look like the line x equal to 6. Notice that you're on this side of the line x equals 6 because in this region x can be 7, 8, 9, 10. We're just in this region. <sighs> in other words, we're saying that the other inequality is x is greater than or equal to 6. Comma. Now look at this line right here now. This line, notice that when the y value is 40, the x value is 40. So that represents the total. In other words, we're saying that x plus y is what? Notice that we're below this line. Since we're below, x plus y is less than or equal to 40. Oh. And that's the two inequality that satisfy this. All right? Nice and easy. Now, the next part says the function p is 4x plus 3y satisfy the solution set represented by the closed triangular region. It says identify the three pairs of values for which p has a maximum or a minimum. So identify the three pairs for which it has a maximum or minimum. So all you're going to do is just look at the three points that satisfy this common region. Here are the three points. These are the three points, the vertices of the triangle. That's so easy. So just going to look at the graph and write down the vertex of each. When x is 6, the y value is as 34. That's 6, 34. Oh. This point right here, when the x value is 6, the y value is, that look like 1, 2. This look like 2. So the y value is 2. So that's 6, 2. And this point right here, when x is 30, the y value is 10. All right? So that is 30, 10. All right? So the three points are going to be 6, 2, 30, 10, and 6, 34. Those are the three points. Now it says which pair of x and y makes p a maximum? Which of them is going to make sure we make the most amount of profit? That's the profit function. So remember the profit function is 4x plus 3y. So we're going to evaluate the profit at each point. At the point 634, the x value is 6 and the y value is 34. The profit is 4 times 6 plus 3 times 34. That will give us, we put that into our calculator. 4 times 6 plus 3 times 34. That will give us 126. The next point we're going to check out now is 30, 10, 30, 10. So P is going to be 4 times 30 plus 3 times 10. That's going to be 120 plus 3 times 10. That's 120 plus 30. That's 150. Oh. All right. That's 150. And then finally, we have 634. 634. So the oh, we already look at 634. The next point that we have to go is 62. So my apologies, 62 is the last point. This one. So now at 62, we're going to have now p is equal to 4 times 6 plus 3 times 2. That is 24 plus 3 times 2. That's 30. Which one gave us the maximum profit? The maximum profit is $150. Oh. So the maximum profit is equal to $150. And that occurred at which one? Which pair of XY makes P maximum? That pair was 30, 10. So that's when X is 30 and Y is 10. All right? That's when we get maximum profit. In other words... We get maximum profit when the x value is 30 and the y value is 10.